So this one was a well-needed one. The Yankees needed this one, and they got it. Walk-off home run in extra innings by Clint Frazier to put the Yankees up 5-3 to three for the win. <sighs> Feels good to be able to report this after four or five straight days of talking about the Yankees losing. And uh, I think you know, I'm hoping that it, it'll spark a little bit of fire into the team to – into their next game against Tampa Bay because la I mean I, I I'm hoping that they'll have some momentum going into Boston, which is going to be another tough test back at home here in Yankee Stadium. So we'll see what happens. But summarize the game today: Domingo Herman started, went five innings, gave up three runs, and um, he kept them in the game for the most part. He got hit, they give up a home run or two, and you know some hits. But you know I, I wish he would have gone six, but that's okay. The Yankees bullpen came in and threw six innings to you know to hold these guys down to the 11th and the and Clint Frazier walked off in the bottom of the 11th inning and um, for for a, a much needed win a great win and it's just good to see Clint Frazier who's been struggling really bad as of lately get this walk off home run and he knew he had it and the Yankees knew too and it was just it's good to see them celebrate because waiting for him at home plate and, and you know and I know these guys are sticking together it doesn't always look like that but I know they're sticking together and working hard through this frustrating period and that's not to say that the other guys need to pick up their pick up the slack and do their part because a lot of the bats are not doing the bat thing. So a lot of the hitters aren't hitting, and that stinks. And it's kind of it's permeating throughout a lot of the team. So when a guy like Clint Frazier comes up and does this, when a guy like Miguel Andujar starts hitting, hit his second home run today of the season in second in consecutive games. So some of their young dynamic players, and I talked about both of them recently. They're starting to pick up steam, while the other guys are, are not doing it in, you know, either much or anything. So it's good to see, but it's also indicative of the streakiness of this Yankees team. The way that this Yankees team is constructed, they're they're either going to be good for a stretch, a long stretch, and then they're going to stink for a long stretch. So I think some pieces need to be changed. And I talked about that recently when I played mock GM. Take a look in the description, and I put a bunch of other video, uh, other videos down there as well. And um, you know, things that the Yankees, if I were GM, what would I do? And I think the Yankees need to become more versatile and more not even more athletic, but a diversification of their lineup in such a way that they're not getting into these deep losing stretches, especially multiple times in a season, which can knock them out of playoff contention really quickly. And I know it's it's not that early anymore. It's June now. Uh, the Yankees have to start establishing themselves as 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 a team to beat in this league. And right now, you know, to me, they're behind the Blue Jays, the Rays, and the, and the Rays. I mean, and the Red Sox. So, uh, the Yankees do have the talent, and, and, and the bullpen's been carrying the team, as well as the starting pitching, that the bats just need to do their part. And again, they need some different, they need some different uh, fresh faces in that lineup. But, that remains to be seen. The Yankees walked off today, so I, it's, it's just good to re report that, and it's good to see the energy kind of come back a little bit, a breath of fresh air on a team, and even me, and a lot of fans, and it's not, it's, it was, it was a good feeling to watch that ball jump off Clint Frazier's bat, and, and the teammates mobbing him at home plate, and him celebrating him interviewing with, you know, Meredith Morocco if it's after the game, and, and it was just, it was good to see, because it was, it's been a frustrating about a week now, so, and the Yankees have to figure out a way to beat these teams, the Blue Jays, the Rays, there are three teams in their division alone that are going to be really, really hard to beat, more so than most of all the other teams in the American League. You know, <clears throat> with the exception of maybe the White Sox and the A's, like, those, again, the American League East teams are probably going to be the biggest hurdles for the Yankees to clear. And they're going to have to make moves. And the moves are going to have, they, they make should be ones that are commensurate with neutralizing parts of the team's in, in the American League East, and I talked about this recently too. You know, you've got a ridiculously athletic teams like the Rays, the Red Sox, and the Blue Jays especially, and you've got to figure out ways to neutralize them. You have to have the right players in order to negate some of the advantages that these teams have. So <clears throat> there's some moves that need to be made, and uh, and again, everybody has different opinions. And, and, and as much as I want the Max Scherzers of the world to come, I just don't think it's reasonable. But I think there's moves that they can make that – can you know put them in a, a a better in better footing to hang with those teams and surpass those teams. So, um, but that remains to be seen. There's still almost two months to the, to the deadline, which is July 30th, 
and uh, there's a lot of baseball to be played in that time period. But if I were them, I'd be proactive and be jumping on or looking to make some moves way before the deadline. So before these other teams do it. And uh, that's that's kind of the summary of the game today. I mean, it's, it, you know, it was really good to see the bullpen do their job again. You know, they kept the Yankees in the game and neutralized the Rays, even in extra innings when they had this runner on second both times. They got in a little bit of trouble, but they, they, they stopped them in the 10th and the 11th. Sessa and, and Chapman pitched well, and, and, and uh, Lucas Lickie picked well. So Lickie picked the ten, pitched the 10th, Sessa pitched the 11th. And Chapman obviously threw a scoreless ninth. Uh, but all in all, great job by the bullpen again to give the Yankees bats a chance. And again, it's it right now, and this is the younger guys, the 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 ones that aren't as you know highly paid and and you know tenured on the team. And Duhar and Frazier are the ones that you know put up kind of the thunder today. And Frazier also saved the game on the field with his defense, with that diving catch in the eighth inning. So he did it on both ends of the stick today, and he's improved tremendously on the defensive side. So I give him credit for that while kind of waiting impatiently, a lot of us, for his bat to come around. And that's been that's been frustrating, but it's been good to see him hang in there, take his lumps, take the booze, and still come through like he did tonight. And I'm hoping to see a lot more of that. So, but that's the recap. The Yankees took it five to three, tied the series at one, and uh, heading into tomorrow for the next game. So hopefully the Yankees have some momentum now, and they can uh, close this game uh, tomorrow with a win. So I'll be doing a recap tomorrow night. But take a look at my next video tomorrow morning. I'll be talking about Josh Hader and the most likely landing spots for him at the, at the trading deadline. So I'll talk to you then.